Franklin County Commissioners, Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. It's 8.30. Janet? Commissioner Saldemeyer? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? You all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Stay standing for the invocation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity to be here for a moment. Uh, I think an appropriate question, a, a leadership question I like to ask myself is this. Uh, what is the spiritual condition of my heart? The psalmist says to, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are saved. I think that question's a big question for everybody. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you do and who you are. Thank you for blessing our county. Thank you for blessing our commissioners. Bless us this day as we do this work. In your name, amen. Thank you. Uh, Derek, do you have anything for us? I do not, just what is on the agenda. Okay, uh, uh, Rebecca's here. We're going to discuss the renovations to the extension of the suite. Uh, she's going to tell us all about that. Okay. Good morning, Rebecca McFarland, Frontier Extension District Director. And uh, we are planning to add another team member, hopefully within the next month or so. Um, our 4-H program has around 500 4-H members. And um, we're creating a 4-H program manager position for here in, in the Ottawa office. So therefore, we need an office for that person. And so we'd like to put up a couple of walls um, kind of in that front area, but behind our small conference room so um, we can make an office space for that, that individual. So it, it includes some walls, of course, a door. There's some light fixtures that probably will need to be moved. Um, Minor renovations, as far as I'm concerned, but I might find out differently when I start getting some bids. But I've I've um, communicated with Eric what we would like to do, and he said I would need to come here and speak with all of you about that before I proceed. Yeah, well, and and she volunteered to bring to gather bids, and I told her that prior to doing that, just come put the idea on your radar, make sure there aren't any initial objections to it. And I will tell you, this is consistent with what we've done with other tenants. We've done it with Advent. We've recently given permission to OFP for a project. So I have absolutely no issue with this whatsoever. As far as I'm concerned, she can proceed with bids. But if the four of you have objections, I think please let us know. I don't have any objections, but... Uh... Are the walls that you need to take down or move, are they supportive walls or just... Uh, you're not taking, you're not taking anything sorry. down, you're just adding, right? We're adding, okay. yes. You're adding, okay. We're adding. I know sometimes if it's not supporting or, or adding, you just use uh, partitions to uh, yeah. partition off. You want to do a little bit more than that. And we might okay. consider that. I think the only thing about that model is that um, the privacy, because there are times where they, they want some privacy or the confidentiality. But yeah, that's been considered, Roy. Okay. You might consider that when you get your bids, but yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No problem. Okay. No well, you know where my office is, so if you have any questions, stop by. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else there? Any public comment, Janet? No. Okay. Consent agenda, we have claim vouchers in the amount of uh, $592,615.72 minutes to the August 24th meeting and payroll of $1,291,645.01. And one penny. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Commissioner yeah. Sotomayor? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay, I have some business. Uh, Brandon, you want to come up and consider awarding bids to paint the exterior? Good 
Good morning. Yeah, so we um, uh, gathered bids after a pre-bid uh, meeting um, to paint the uh, exterior um, of the annex. Um, we talked about a few weeks ago, um, all the cinder block, everything that's white right now is kind of what we're looking at. Um, at the pre-bid, we discovered that um, there are uh, expansion joints um, all along the walls, um, and they're, they have a sealant um, in them that needs to be there. Um, what looked like uh, peeling paint was actually that sealant that was failing. Um, so that needs to be replaced um, at the same time that they do uh, they do the painting. Um, they, that is included um, in the bid. Um, and so that bid uh, came out to $27,521.10. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, that you have on this. Um, otherwise, we'll be looking for a motion to uh, approve that. Um, we can start moving forward with that project. Where are they out of? Um, I believe this company is out of the Kansas City area. I'm not sure exactly where they're from. But. How many bids did you get, Brandon? We got two. We two? got two. Yeah. Is this kind of in the area you thought it was going to be? It's Are a little bit more than anticipated, but you know, um, that's the sealant really added uh, quite yeah, a bit true. to that, and we just weren't anticipating that. Yeah. So this bit includes the sealant, the paint, and the painting. That's correct. Oh, okay. And when do they think they might get it done? Um, we, let's see, I believe that in the RFP, I expect, um, I think it was the end of November, I think is when I had put the deadline at. So I um, should be shooting for no later than that. I just didn't know. I know about paint, but I don't know about sealant, what kind of temperature it needs to be. Yeah. If it's too cold to do it, you know, if it's this or that or, right. and does it need to go in and then dry or does it need to go in and then can you paint right over it or does it need to go in and then it come back and paint? I think, it, I'm not, I'm not a professional painter or anything, but I think the way that this works is they would scrape everything, t tear all the sealant out, the old sealant, they would paint the building and then you finish with that sealant. Oh. That would be the last thing. That, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, see there's a big difference between the two bids. Yeah, I was really shocked to see that. Um, I, I'm really not sure what separated them so much there. Um, yeah. But Okay, any other questions from Brandon? Oh. A motion for this item. I make a motion to award the bid for the NX Painting Project to uh, Serta Pro. Painters an amount of twenty-seven thousand five hundred twenty-one dollars and ten cents. Motion to approve. Again. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Dickinson. Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor. Yes. Chair Dunn. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, man. Okay, Dustin, you're up next. Good morning, commissioners. The first item I have for you today is approval of our fiscal year 23 adult carryover reimbursement plan. Uh, since we only do this once a year, I will just remind you what our carryover reimbursement funds are. Uh, these funds are separate from our grant funds that we receive from KDOC every year. Uh, these funds are funds that we collect throughout the year and we are allowed to roll these funds over from year to year, which is a big difference from our grants. And so we have to come up with a separate budget for these separate funds. Uh, so the first one is for our adult side. Uh, these are pretty similar amounts to what we budgeted last year. Uh, the total of all of these is $103,388.28. And you have a summary and a narrative uh, in the packet as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions on the uh, adult carryover reimbursement funds. Any questions? Okay, on this one, uh, motion to read. I make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2023 adult carryover reimbursement plan. So moved. Second. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay, go ahead. And the second item is for the same thing, but on the juvenile side, you'll notice that the 
amount here is quite different. Uh, we just do not have the same number of juvenile clients as we do adult clients. And we, have, we just don't collect the same amount of funds year in and year out from these clients as we do the adults. So the total here is $6,713.88. And again, I'm happy to answer any questions on these funds as well. Any questions? Okay, motion on this today. I make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2023 juvenile carryover reimbursement plan. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Thank you, Thank Commissioner. You, Hey, David, we got some expensive equipment to talk about. Uh, it, all of our equipment, it seems to be expensive. <laughs> that is correct. So um, what I'm bringing before you today is um, asking to be able to purchase three new 2022 John Deere uh, 6105E tractors with a 72-inch uh, uh, diamond rotary or side mount mower. Um, for a cost of $110,794.52 a piece. Um, what we are, are planning to do here are replacing three older tractors. We've got a couple of 2002 New Hollands uh, and a 2012 New Holland that, um, uh, well, one of them is nothing more than a parts mower anymore. Um, the other two um, are in service uh, when they're running. Um, but uh, we've had just a, um, a run of unfortunate luck with our mowers this, this mowing season. It seems they've been spending more time in the shop for various things that have ha occurred than they've been able to, uh, to be productive out in the field. Um, originally, we had in our five-year equipment replacement plan to replace two mowers this year and one next. Uh, but due to the availability of the mowers and being so late in the year, um, I would like to go ahead and, and uh, package all three of them uh, together. Uh, they're not going to be delivered until sometime in the first quarter of next year anyway. Uh, this locks in the price uh, so that any price increases that may occur, uh, which is likely, uh, we've got a locked in price. Uh, we will also stand to, to receive those new mowers prior to uh, the, the 2023 mowing season. So we'll have uh, three uh, brand new mowers to be able to take care of the job that needs to be done out in the field. Um, and, and then, of course, we would, um, uh, these mowers that, that we're not, uh, that, that we're looking to replace, we would include them in an auction. And so uh, uh, with the prices, we, we did get a quote from uh, Case as well, um, uh, but it was significantly higher. Even with the source well discounts that, that they provided, they are still significantly higher than the mowers that uh, we're gonna be getting from John Deere. And, and this, this uh, $332,000, $383.56, the total of the three would be paid from our special equipment fund, which is, is a fund that we um, save money for these equipment purchases each year. And so we'll be able to, uh, with the funds available, we'll be able to pay cash with this. Any questions for David? Uh, did Heritage Tractor even bid on Something like this, Heritage Tractor. They're John Deere and Baldwin. These are John Deere tractors, and we're we're working through Murphy Tractor. Um, we oh, right after I first started, we purchased a, a tractor from Murphy, um, and I would say that we didn't. Um, I would say that we haven't received great service from Heritage. So Murphy has the, I guess, the side-mounted uh, 
mowers and everything. Yeah, it's it's kind of a funny deal, but uh, Murphy will be, they're working with Diamond, um, who has uh, provided uh, the last couple of mowing decks that we have purchased, a boom mower and, and whatnot, and we've had really good luck with those. Um, and that is our, our preferred brand. Um, they've held up pretty well, and, and we're happy with that product. And so uh, Murphy has teamed with Diamond to provide these tractors to us. Do you do all your mowing from the road with the side, which yes. makes a lot of sense? Then you don't have to put your mower. Yeah, our, our, ditch our ditches are not configured in such a way that it's easy to get off the road to do that. We do in some cases in some areas, uh, but predominantly we have to stay on the edge of the road. We have our boom mowers that can reach out a little further to take care of, um, um, you know, the, the mowing up close to the fences and those sorts of things, and we, we try to do that as much as possible. But primarily these will be on gravel road, be used on gravel roads um, right next to the edge of the road. And then the, the trouble spots, the, the areas with a lot of tree canopy and, and tree issues, uh, we'll, we'll bring the boom mower in to take care of those areas. Any other questions? Is that? I don't even want to know how much they've gone up because everything goes up. But when he, when, when he said something about expensive equipment, I'm like, com compared to a lot of stuff that you asked for? Yeah. This is not that expensive. Yeah, these are probably mowing. And, and these are basic mowers. These are not fancy tractors. In fact, um, um, it's important, you know, our guys spend a lot of time in these tractors. Um, uh, basic necessities, air condition, and a radio. We had to add the radio into this tractor so that they would have that, that component. Um, so these are really, you know, these aren't fancy mowers. Okay. Any other questions? Positive than responsible. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of Three twenty twenty two John Deere sixty one oh five E tractors with a twenty a seventy two inch diamond side rotary mower for Murphy Trafford Tractor and Equipment Company in the amount of one hundred ten thousand seven hundred ninety four dollars fifty two cents for each unit for a total of three hundred and thirty two thousand three hundred eighty three dollars and. 56 cents. This is uh, be coming out of the road and bridge fund, equipment fund. Okay. So, so move. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Stottlemyre? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Hey, talking about speed limits now, David. Yes. So uh, as we discussed in, during staff reports last week, uh, we received a request um, accompanied by a petition from the vast majority of the landowners out in the Walnut Creek Acres subdivision. Um, they have a strong desire to see speed limits put up, uh, speed limit signs established within that subdivision due to some issues that they've had in the neighborhood that they are all very concerned about. Uh, the fact that they all went together and they um, um, put this petition together, uh, you know, it's nice to have that kind of support before bringing these sorts of things to you. I have visited with the Sheriff's Department, both Sheriff Richards and Under Sheriff Laswell, uh, and we are all in agreement that, uh, that speed limit signs are warranted. It will help the, uh, the Sheriff's Department to be able to enforce um, uh, well, to be able to do enforcement a little easier within that subdivision if the speed limit signs are up. Um, due to the research that uh, uh, Under Sheriff Laswell provided some state statutes, um, um, according to those statutes, we can go uh, down to a 30 mile an hour speed limit within urban areas, uh, and that is kind of the closest correlation to uh, Walnut Creek that we can come up with. And, and that is all, consequently, that is also um, the, the same speed limit that um, in the Wheatland Farm subdivision, which years ago was 
that was actually the last time that the commission uh, established speed limits was in Wheatland Farm for the very same reasons. And 30 miles an hour was the, uh, uh, that's what the commission went with at that time as well. Okay, any other questions? I know when you proposed this to start with, you were talking about 20 or 25, and I was like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. and so 30 is exactly what so, I would So the, the 20 to 25 came from um, uh, traveling through the city of Wellsville. Those are uh, predominantly the speed limits within the city limits. Uh, but upon, you know, reading the, the statutes that, that uh, Under Sheriff Laswell provided and a few other things, it seems prudent that um, along with what we did in Wheatland Farm, we kind of established the precedent that it uh, seemed prudent to, to go with a 30 mile an hour in the resolution. Okay, any other questions, David, about this? It sounds like a reasonable, you know, answer to the thing. And and that, that is one we just redid too, wasn't it? Yes, we uh, just. Which that encourages yeah, a little more. They, it's nice and smooth so they can yeah. travel a little faster without uh, worry of hitting a pothole. So when, do you put, when you put the new signs up, do you kind of put, do you put flags up for a little bit? So you don't flag them, you just put them up and yeah. say, I hope you see yeah. them. Yeah, no, we'll yeah. put several sets of signs in. Um, I, I don't think there'll be any any doubt that folks will see them and notice them right away. Okay. Motion for this be, I make the motion to <laughs> approve the adoption of a resolution establishing a 30 mile per hour speed limit for the streets in the Walnut Creek Acres subdivision, pages one through five in Franklin County, Kansas. Motion approved. Second. Dennis? Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay, it's that time of year again, where we <laughs> sign on a delegate for KC uh, uh, October meeting representative for K Camp, nominating a voting delegate. Um, I think I am. Was that last year? And, uh, and you were in a couple of years before that. And so. I've been it before. We'll again. have two. We'll have two more. Remember K work and K C. Mm -hmm. So this is just for K camp. Well, I plan on going. I'd... I'm going. I'll nominate. I am to be our primary delegate. I'll, I'll primary. volunteer to be an alternate. So we would need a motion to nominate Ian as the primary and Roy as the alternate. And that would be the motion. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay. It uh, concludes our business for today. Uh, Derek, do you want to start us off on uh, yeah. staff reports? Yeah, I don't have too much today. I um, And certainly he can come up and speak for himself. I do want to commend Paul Bean. He's um, been working his tail off um, regarding Proximity Park, trying to gather data on what an appropriate land price would be as more and more of these, you know, applicants come in. Um, not all interested parties agree on what that land price should be, but certainly we're working hard behind the scenes to try and, um, you know, get that figured out and appreciate all the work that, that Paul's put into that. That's, you know, that's, that's a big deal. Um, we've got to get somebody out there and to get somebody out there, we're going to start having to get realistic and aggressive and what we're willing to offer. So, um, look forward to continue working with Paul on that. Um, the other thing, um, this afternoon we have interviews for our communications director position, have three fantastic applicants coming in. Um, if we're not able to find one there, we've got three more waiting that are also 
worth interviewing. So certainly have a lot of interest from a lot of great candidates. So that's really all I have today. Thanks. Paul, do you have anything else you'd like to speak as we go around the room? Morning, commissioners. Morning. Um, just to, uh, to follow up on what Derek said, we, we are getting a lot of activity uh, at the moment on Proximity Park. We had a uh, executive from an international company on, on site yesterday and uh, gave him a tour of the park and the community and had a nice lunch and really went very well. So that was encouraging. And then um, working on a pretty significant re request for a proposal that we'll submit uh, today on another industry. Um, I want to lift up, when, when we get these requests, there's a ton of information that needs to go into it. And uh, I can't do all that because I don't know all that myself. So folks like Janet, uh, she's my go-to, of course, on the tax questions. and. Um, I know that, you know, she's got a full plate, but she's always so nice and gracious, and, and I really appreciate uh, working with Janet. She's very helpful and helps me get that done. And the same is true for Dennis Tharp and my call at the city. It, it, I have to reach out and get that support to get these deadlines. They give you pretty short deadlines, um, basically about three days to pull all this together. So um, I'm excited that we have these opportunities. I uh, appreciate all the support I'm getting. And uh, to, to echo Derek's comments, we're finding that it's an incredibly competitive market, um, very, very competitive in our region. And so we're going to have to really take some good hard looks at our packaging and what all we can provide uh, to the interested parties to compete. But excited about the activity uh, on the housing front, which is obviously related to it. The moderate income housing, the first round of those grants uh, are due at the end of September. And uh, the, I'm on the uh, kind of the review committee for the city of Ottawa, and we've we've looked at the three apps we got, and uh, my call did a great job of presenting it to the city commission, and they're beginning to look through that, and they'll select what they want to submit. Uh, I believe the start the discussion uh, on the same same front in Wellsville tonight. Uh, have a great opportunity, I think, in Wellsville for some new housing. So. The cities will make the application, formal application goes through the cities uh, to the state. And then sometime in November, the state will uh, announce the awards for the first round. And then there's those need to be completed within 18 months. So it's a fast track. It's exciting. Uh, we have a lot of interest from developers in our region now and uh, continue to have more calls. And so uh, I'm very encouraged by the uptick in activity on all fronts. So it's, it's exciting. So, uh, but as I always say, I enjoy the uh, activity, but I'll really be happy when I see a shovel in the ground. So that's what we're working toward. But happy to answer any questions. Well, we'd like to see, so, we'd like to see something out there too, Paul. So we're with you. All right. Well, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Brandon, do you have anything else for us? Yeah, just real quick. Um, I'm sure that uh, many of you have probably noticed um, in this building the uh, glue uh, failure that we're having um, on the flooring that we put down, mm -hmm. um, specifically right outside these doors here and there's a couple other um, little areas where that's showing up um, i did contact the contractor that installed this flooring um, they came out looked at it um, and they're right now they're trying to figure out what the game plan is to get that fixed so they're they're working on it and i'm checking in with them periodically to stay on top of that so we can hopefully find a solution uh, to this it's really unfortunate that we're dealing with this right now um, but I know they want to get it fixed just as much as we do, so I'm hopeful we can come up with a solution. Um, we're uh, also we're just kind of getting ready for a car show um, coming up on the courthouse lawn, trying to make things look good there. Working on the um, the corners on Main Street, making sure those are all looking good. So you may see some movement down there. Things looking a little bit different. So we're just trying to. Do, do a little bit extra there to get that looking nice um, for all the traffic we're going to be seeing through there uh, coming up. Um, I think that's all I've got.
Yeah, it looks nice all the time down there, I think. I think yeah. your guys are doing a great job. Yeah, down there I appreciate at the that. House. Thank you. Kyle, you got anything for us today? Dustin? Uh, David must have something. Okay. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about a low water crossing and a, and a bridge uh, over in the eastern part of the far eastern part of the county. We've been, uh, we've been patching on this low water crossing and kind of keeping an eye on it uh, for, for quite some time. We had planned to do some major repairs uh, earlier this year, but uh, we had some, some flooding early on and really the, the low water crossing is beyond repair. It needs to be replaced. Um, the cost on that to do a full survey and design and, and uh, uh, get that constructed and ins inspected is around $350,000. And located just a few hundred yards away is another bridge. It's actually the third lowest uh, rated bridge, sufficiency rated bridge in the county. It's like 28.5 is a sufficiency rating, which is not very good. Uh, so that bridge is going to need to be replaced uh, in the relatively near future. Uh, price for that is uh, in the $450,000, $500,000 range. This is on a section of road that sees about maybe 15 cars a day. That's the, that's the number that we see in the bridge inspection reports. I would be surprised if there are 15 cars a day that go down this road. Um, access to uh, the property south of this, these two structures, uh, those folks have uh, two additional ways to get out and, and get to where they need to go. Um, so we're not talking about a, um, you know, whenever it floods and we have flooding issues, they can't travel down that road anyway, so they are they are going east or west uh, to get where they need to go. What I would like to do, what I would like permission to do is reach out to the landowners, the two adjacent landowners that would be immediately affected by this, and I would like to discuss the possibility of closing about a half mile of road that would include both of those structures. I, I uh, struggle with spending maybe up to $800,000 on a couple of structures that you're still not gonna be able to traverse whenever it floods. And it only serves a very, very few vehicles per day. Um, and so I would like to visit with the two adjoining landowners to see if there's another solution, see if they would be agreeable to uh, closing the road uh, and working out access between them to get to their properties. Um, you know, at this, at this point, it's just a conversation um, to see if they would be interested to see if there is another solution out there. Uh, one of the, you know, if we were to ultimately close this road and if we could eliminate the one bridge that's on our bridge inventory, one of the uh, bridge programs that we just actually submitted bridge applications for has a program that if you eliminate a bridge from your bridge inventory, they will reduce the matching, um, uh, the matching requirements on any bridge award that they have through that program. Up to uh, $1,000 a linear foot with a $50,000 minimum on that um, uh, matching reduction. So it's you know, there's a financial reward from eliminating a, a bridge uh, like this that's got such a low efficiency, sufficiency rating and a, in poor condition. And so, again, I would just like uh, permission to begin those discussions um, to see where they may lead. So you're saying that they're half, half, how far apart are they? A few hundred feet. Okay, so. They're very, very close together. And what happens is there's, uh, there's two forks of a creek. One of them has a bridge structure on it. The other one has a low water crossing on it. And, and so uh, they separate and then come back together uh, at those locations. 
that's why we have two structures so close together. And, and people would, no matter where their land is, they'd have access to it? Is that where, is that where your concern is? Well, the, the two landowners, we would have to work out being able to provide access to their properties. But the folks that utilize that road to travel back and forth, it, it's, it's really nice. It, it's beautiful certain times of the year. But the road coming into those structures is way lower than either side of the, the road. Um, I think Commissioner Stoudemire is familiar with the area. And so yeah, I think Dave is going out the right way, too. I mean, the most conflict, if you have any, would be just the landowners. I don't think it's going to be the traffic. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody say, oh, well, I always love to drive through there in the yeah. springtime. Or it ain't like you said, it is a beautiful drive through there, you know. But it is <laughs> bad. It's yeah. been bad for a long time. For a long time. The, the, the bridge was built in 1920, uh, so it's, it's time. It's 100 years old. Um, uh, it is well past its useful life, um, and eventually we're going to have to either replace, well, we'd have to replace it if we're going to keep it on our inventory. And you can't replace one without replacing the other? Oh, no. And so it makes no sense at all. And I'm thinking what, what you could do with $800,000 on, like, it, it, old Highway 50. It, exactly. And so, you know, those are dollars that I, I, I feel, uh, as a public works director, that could be better utilized in other areas that would impact a lot more people. And so, uh, again, I'm just looking for... Um, um, uh, approval to, to maybe move forward with some informal conversations with the two landowners that would be uh, affected by this. Would you leave it open until it completely fails, or would you just go ahead and shut them down? Um, I, I would, I, I'm not sure at this point. I would work with the, the landowners to sort through those issues. Hey, this is at the very, very beginning of this process. I mean, all we're looking for, and we don't even need any kind of formal permission. We just want to make sure there are no objections. Basically, what I wanted to prevent happening was one of you getting a call about this completely out of the blue and not knowing what is going on. Yeah. If the conversations go well, yeah. then we would be back in front of you with a formal request to vacate and would have significantly more information at that point. But for now, yeah. David's just wanting to touch base and make sure that you're all aware of that. It, it's more of a sentimental drive through there. It's not for big equipment or anything like that to travel through there. Not affecting farm agriculture. Hey, you wouldn't want to take a big truck through there. You, you couldn't. The, the the banks on the side of the road are are too. It's too narrow to, yeah. to get large implement. You said the, most, the biggest thing would be would be the landowners, not so much the people that travel it or do go through there. Uh, it, it's been that way for 30, 40 years, probably. You know, it just keep getting worse. You know. I got good with it. It'd be interesting to hear what you come up with. Yeah. 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 Yeah, me too. I want to see what you come up with. Well, I'll um I will start that process and and just try to have some some conversations. Uh the last thing I wanted to mention, um we've got the the two motor graders that um that we that you all approved here about a month ago uh should be here in about three hours. And so that, uh, that'll be good. So we'll start that process of switching them out. Um, we are still looking at a backhoe for the transfer station. Um, in fact, on Friday, we're going to go up to uh, Wamigo to look at one that uh, is being used in a transfer station. It's the exact model that, uh, that we're looking at purchasing so that we see it in action and, and make sure that it's what we need for our facility. Um, and so, yeah, if that all goes well, here in the next couple of weeks, I'll be bringing a, uh, another uh, equipment purchase request back to you. The good news is I don't have anything scheduled in uh, 2023, so. Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, all right. Hey, Janet, you have anything? No, thank you. Okay, commissioners, uh, 
I'm sure you're all going to mention, we all, several of us attended Bud Ramson's a little award deal that Martin Woodman put on the other night. And I thought Derek gave a, a very good presentation to, to uh, Doc Ransom. And, uh, but anyhow, I just wanted to just kind of mention that. I know a lot of, several of you went, probably had some. Some I did go to last week, I thought. I uh, know uh, I didn't realize how big it would be when I went, but I went to the uh, uh, announcement of the uh, K-68 uh, forward lane expansion. I went over to the Lewisburg Ford, provided the place to put very nice facility over there. Uh, the governor was there. Uh, Cerise Davis was there, our U.S. representative. The uh, Department of Transportation director was there. And uh, uh, they give a good talk good, because a lot of this stuff goes back when you, you go clear back to 2008 when this all started. And uh, I know Franklin County, Miami County, uh, Payola, Ottawa, and Lewisburg all went together and with KDOT and started having meetings and so forth. And I know I and Jim Hague, the past public works director, was on that committee. And it just kind of, it went strong for several years and then money really got tight with KDOT and, and you know, just kind of on the back burner. But now it's really come to the front. Uh, uh, with the new money that's come down from the federal government. And uh, we're going to have the uh, state of Kansas uh, approved 11 projects that are in the process right now. One of them is from 169 to 69, making it a four lane highway. And that's a 50, uh, $48 million project, is what that is. And there's 11 projects across the state of Kansas right now that are opening up. And a $525 million worth of project, and they hope to have within well, next year have a million dollars worth of projects going. So uh, it was very well attended. Uh, they, you know, the, the governor, Street Davis, and, and the uh, highway director give a very, very good talk. And, and uh, uh, Chairman Roberts from Miami County, of course, was in this from the very beginning also. He gave a very good talk. So. Uh, just kind of give a couple issues to it. There was a teacher just died on this patch of road just a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. She'd been a teacher for 29 years in Lewisburg. Just getting ready to retire this year. And uh, they don't, you know, say, you know, but it, I didn't realize that, that the uh, uh, Chairman Roberts' wife had lost her life there 37 years ago on this same stretch of highway. I didn't know it until they give you a talk. So it was a good, it's going to be a great thing. And hopefully we all live long enough to see it come all the way to Ottawa. Awesome. But at least it's got to start somewhere. And I haven't been on the other stretch, but from Lewisburg back to the Missouri Bay line, they're making a bunch of big improvements on that. They're not four lane in it, but they are trying to make a lot of big improvements on it and uh, do a lot of winding and, and straightening out and so forth. But there's only been four lane from Lewisburg back to Ottawa. It was a very, they provided a meal for everybody over there. And those were from Fort put on the deal. And uh, it was just a fun thing to see after 14 years come together. So that's all I got. I don't have anything more. Um, on Thursday, I had a meeting, a, a Zoom meeting. I was on, I'm on the uh, Constitution Review Committee for KCCA. Uh, we're doing some editing on that. Um, on Thursday, also, we had a Zoom meeting for the hospital board because the um, uh, administration from the hospital was actually in a conference in uh, Florida, I believe. We had quite an extensive discussion about the hospital sales tax. Um, and also, they were reminding people about the gala they're having at uh, Legacy Square. Um, I, um, I don't remember when it is. but um, And then on Friday, there was a chamber of coffee at Once Upon a Rose which is a, a used furniture, kind of an antique furniture, home decor, and boutique shop in the 200 block of um, Main Street. It's kind of a unique uh, mix of new and old. Um, some really nice people that are running that. The city had uh, quite an extensive uh, study session on Monday. 
they reviewed their monthly reports. Um, some of the takeaways from that were that, and every month, it's the sales tax amounts are up, and they continue to be up. And and then, of course, uh, Mike Goodmore reminds us that if we go into recession, we're not going to be seeing numbers like that. But um, at this point, the numbers are good. Um, they announced a new Main Street director, which that program has had some really difficult times. And but they have a lady that is a senior at OU that seems like she would she'll be a good fit for that. They continue to review their budget, and they went over their moderate income housing project proposals and trying to figure out how to get those done by the deadline. And then one more reminder is um, this weekend's Labor Day, and on Sunday they will have the fireworks show that would have normally been on um, 4th of July. It'll be at Sunday at dusk, so don't forget to, if you start seeing flashes of light in the night, on Sunday, um, come out and enjoy fireworks. And that's all I have. Okay. Eric, when do we have our uh, budget hearing? The 7th? September 7th at 6 p.m. Next week. Mm -hmm. Week from today. Okay. Just want to warn everybody that we'll have our budget hearing next week. Uh, it's Labor Day uh, weekend holiday. Uh, we just ended up uh, August here today, and, and there's a lot going on in September throughout the city. We got the car show, and we got the Fair of the Past and coming up here in a, a couple weeks. On a weekend is Fair of the Past, and the next weekend is a big car show. And things are getting back to normal after hiatus from uh, COVID-19, so it's uh, good. The community is uh, uh, getting back to feel a little bit more normal. Roy Pulse having an executive board meeting for FCDC at like 6 a.m. the Tuesday after a holiday weekend, so you might note that too. <laughs> Got a knack for doing that. Let's, as early as possible, as soon as possible after a holiday. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Yeah, I, I know. Already forgot. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't have anything else. So, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Okay.